starter ship, multi-crew capable, low-cost fighter, it's no surprise that the Misk Reliant Tana is one of the most hotly requested ship reviews on this channel. But is it too good to be true? How does the true performance in-game actually stack up? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable Misk Reliant Tana, which is described as a light fighter. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, the format will be familiar. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 ship tour. And in keeping with the other Reliant models, entry to the Tana is via a deployable ramp at the rear of the ship. This takes you up into the rear section of the Tana, which is well kitted out. There are two beds for the crew, and a small storage area for cargo. There's some internal storage and a weapons rack. There's also a mini bathroom for the crew. And then moving forward to the front of the ship, past some component access, leads into the cockpit. The left hand chair is for the pilot, and the right hand for the co-pilot. Part 2 – Combat Performance The stock Tana comes armed with two gimbaled size 1 M3A laser cannons underslung beneath the wing, and two gimbaled size 3 M5A laser cannons on the wingtips. Those wingtip mounts can be swapped out for dual size 2, which allow the co-pilot to control them remotely. If you're flying solo, all of those mounts slave to the pilot. On top of all of that, the Tana is armed with a generous armament of 20 size 2 missiles. Yes, 20. That brings a considerable boost to the combat potential of this ship. Defensively, you get two size 1 shield generators, which is pretty much the standard for light fighters. All of that makes for a fairly robust combat platform. Up to six size 2 weapons, which for a starter ship slash light fighter combo is plenty. The capacitors give a couple of seconds worth of firepower, but recharge quickly, and lends the Reliant Tanner more to a jousting style of combat, which again isn't uncommon for a light fighter. The challenge is that the Tana is quite susceptible to losing weapons or wings, which means you need to be very careful with your jousts, or make good use of decoupled mode. But for low to medium threat targets, the Tana really doesn't struggle too much. For a turret gunner, the Tana isn't great. That's largely due to the combat style of the Tana, and the unusual placement of the remote turrets at the end of the wingtips. Mostly, you just find yourself firing forward at the same place as the pilot, which makes the whole thing a little pointless. The weapons assignment between pilot and gunner also isn't the best, but may improve in the future. One good use for a co-pilot is for the missile operator mode however, with the pilot able to blast away at targets, and the co-pilot supporting with tactical missile deployment. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, the Reliant does really well. The canopy is right at the front of the ship, and is a bubble-style canopy, which makes for great all-around visibility. The Reliant also rotates during VTOL flight, meaning that changing the wing position actively improves visibility where it's needed most. It's also worth adding that the MFD placement is great, not in the way, but right where you need it, and with a good number of screens too. In terms of handling, the Reliant Tana is… okay. It's not slow or sluggish, but there is a big mismatch between the main engines and the thrusters, which means that the Tana struggles a little with wind or off-axis movement. The thrusters also seem easily damaged, which can make the whole ship very hard to handle. 
With a top speed of 1,150 meters per second, the Tana is neither fast nor slow. It accelerates well to that top speed, but braking performance is much more limited, owing to those underpowered thrusters. All of these challenges become obvious when landing the Tana, and it's often best to completely stop the ship before transitioning to landing position and setting down, otherwise it can become quite difficult to handle, which is a shame. All of that said, the Tana is by no means the most difficult ship to fly, and these are all nuances that can be mitigated with experience behind the wheel. The stock quantum drive is really fast, which is good, although the range is a little more limited, not quite able to get between Hurston and Crusader. So depending on whether you're doing short hops within a planetary sphere of influence, or longer trips across the system, you might consider changing that out. Part 4. Operating Costs as a starter ship, and as you might expect, the Reliant Tana is cheap to maintain, and across refuel and repair, you're usually well below 1000 Alpha UEC. If you've fired off a lot of missiles, you might expect to go a little beyond that, but not much. And remember, that's largely due to the fact that this ship carries 20 missiles. You have a lot of options too with the Tana for making some money back. Naturally, combat contracts will be the default option, with the Reliant Tana able to tackle missions comparable to other light fighters. That means probably settle for low to medium risk, although if you're adventurous and skilled, going higher tier is also possible. There's one SCU of cargo storage aboard, which really isn't much for trading, although theoretically possible, but is more than enough for doing some delivery contracts and that physical space is tucked away at the back starboard side, which is the handiest point for getting in and out of the ship. And not to forget, the co-pilot seat, as well as beds in the back, mean it's quite possible to also taxi other players around in the Tana. Part 5. The Verdict so, in terms of changes and upgrades, I run my Reliant Tana just like a Weeble Stuff production, filled with badges. That's wingtip turrets on both wingtips with badger repeaters, and two more badges on the wing mounts for a total of six. If you're particularly adventurous, you might also upgrade the shield generators for FR-66s, the power plant for a Dynaflux, and glaciers for coolers, although they're not really super necessary upgrades. The Reliant Tana is a fairly balanced ship. It's got strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons, and that all helps with giving a ship character. Some of the strengths lie in combat performance, and the ship is cheap to run and highly versatile. There are two beds in the back, internal storage space, a seat and roll for a co-pilot, and decent combat performance, and that's quite a lot for a starter ship. The recall timer is only 51 seconds too, meaning if you lose your Tana, you don't have to wait long to get it back. That said, the flight model can be a bit rough and ready, and sometimes the thrusters will give you a hard time. But with a price of 870,000 Alpha credits, or $75, the Reliant Tana is one of the cheaper ship options, especially compared with other light fighters. Is it worth the price? Maybe. Certainly, the in-game price is compelling, although you'd probably want to spend a few more credits upgrading your turret options. And perhaps even the out-of-game price could be justified in that for your money, you get a versatile starter ship that works for a couple of players. It's got a lot of character, and I love that about the Tana. Just sadly, it's a little more difficult to fly than some of the other options out there. But what do you think of the Reliant Tana? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, and you might also enjoy my review of the Reliant Marco. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.